So my name is Jeff Winter, and like Tommy said, I am an industry executive for manufacturing with Microsoft. And basically what that means is I help manufacturers digitally transform at scale. And in order to be successful at that, I need to be intimately involved with what's happening in the industry. And that's why I participate in so many associations, standards bodies, academic groups, and even research teams within Microsoft so that I can share with you the latest and greatest and how you get to benefit. Today is actually my first in-person event since the start of the pandemic, over two years ago. And I think I chose a pretty great one to start it back up, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so think about how much has changed in the past two years. The world as we know it is an entirely different place. And we've all had to adapt. Industry 4.0 and digital transformation have been thrust into the spotlight. And what was once seen as a lofty future goal has now become a necessity for survival. Some have thrived and others have faltered. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to be talking about a different take on your digital transformation journey. One I don't hear as much as production optimization and cost reduction. I'm going to be talking about unlocking innovation and delivering new services through digital transformation. <clears throat> so one of the things I like about my role and Microsoft in general is that <clears throat> although we make products that help manufacturers digitally transform, we also are a manufacturer ourselves. And most people either forget about that or don't realize it. We have over 42,000 SKUs at 33 manufacturing facilities and distribution centers that send over 30,000 locations in 107 countries. So yeah, we get to see both sides at a pretty massive scale. <clears throat> and there aren't that many companies that get to claim that. And we get to share our innovations with you. So today, we're talking about innovation. And my personal favorite definition of innovation is the practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new products and services, or the improvement in the way products and services are offered. Innovation is emerging from unexpected places, and those that are digitally transforming are finding newer and more ways to innovate. So around four years ago, World Economic Forum engaged McKinsey, and they went walking through thousands of different manufacturers looking for companies that did Industry 4.0. Initially, they found 16. And every six months or so, they announced the next group of companies. And they're up well past 100 right now. Now, these lighthouse factories, as they call them, are implementing advanced manufacturing and AI-driven technology at scale and seeing significant gains. They're reflective of the leading edge of technology adoption and exemplify a new production approach that's driving the next wave of global economic growth. And if you look across these findings, some of them are pretty counterintuitive, and I'll share a few with you. First, success is not limited to just big companies. In fact, one of the first 16 was a small Italian manufacturer that only had around 200 employees or so at the time. So yeah, small can be successful. Second, every driver of this change was external. That means no one volunteered to do this or did it for some small incremental gain. They did it because they believed they had to. Third, minimal replacement of equipment. Legacy equipment and older facilities do not necessarily create a barrier to innovation. These lighthouse factories, in most cases, were created by transforming existing brownfield operations. And fourth, these lighthouse factories did not deploy technology to replace operators and workers. They found unprecedented efficiency gains through transforming the nature of work by reskilling and upskilling workers. It's estimated that 5% of occupations have 100% of tasks that can be automated with today's technology. And 62% of occupations have at least 30% of tasks that can be automated. 
So they were able to repurpose a portion of people's time and skills to more meaningful work, which actually benefited them as employees and as a company. So as Microsoft's focus on manufacturing, we've found five core areas that successful companies focus on in order to realize the benefit of Industry 4.0. And they're reflective of industry research, like the World Economic Forum stuff I showed you, our own research, and even talking to thousands of clients. We call them industry priority scenarios. And they are transforming your workforce, which is about changing the way that your employees work, engaging your customers in new ways, which is about creating new and relevant customer experiences that span your sales, marketing, and service channels. Unlocking innovation and delivering new services. That's about discovering and engineering new business value, the heart of what I'm talking about here today. Fourth is building an agile factory, which is about creating an agile, flexible, and responsive production process. And fifth, creating more resilient supply chains, which is about improving service resiliency and profitability through intelligent supply planning and execution. Now, the reason I share all these with you is to show you that unlocking innovation is just one pillar or one part of your bigger digital transformation journey. And the part that unites these, the common denominator across all of them, is the digital thread. And the digital thread can be thought of as ultimately providing universal access to data as it weaves in and out of business processes and functions to enable continuity and accessibility. Now, it doesn't matter which one of the five of these you start with. You need to make sure that you define the right business outcomes. Because the technology is there, and it works. But one of the things I find is a hurdle for manufacturers is deep down, I don't think they think it works. So they go to test it in a pilot, and they're not ready for it to work, which means they're not ready for it to scale, which means you end up having a cultural problem. Think about this. If your digital transformation is successful, and I mean truly successful, it fundamentally changes the way that your company operates, which means that nearly everyone's job changes. How many companies or how many people are ready for that sort of change? When we talk about successful digital transformation, people are the focus, technology is the tool, and more value is the outcome. <clears throat> Whenever we talk about Industry 4.0, I like to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So this is my way of describing it. Industry 3.0 is about automation, or the reduction of human intervention and processes. Industry 4.0 is about cognition, or the process of acquiring knowledge and understanding. And what separates these two is your ability to properly capture and harness the power of data. And IoT is one of the core enabling technologies that generates and captures all this data. Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, famously said in 2010 that the amount of data generated since the dawn of civilization up until 2003 is estimated to be five exabytes. According to Statista, in 2020, we generated 64 zettabytes worth of data. That means we made almost 13,000 times the amount of data in that one year, 2020, as we did in all of civilization up until 2003. That's crazy. Are you guys using that data? Do you know, according to Splunk, 55% of enterprise data is either unknown or unused by anyone in the company? According to University of Texas Austin, a 10% increase in data usability results in the average Fortune 1000 company's profit increasing by $2 billion, or revenue by $2 billion. And my personal favorite, according to Forbes, data-driven companies are 23 times, not two to three, 23 times more likely to acquire new customers than their peers. So once again, are you using that data? This IoT technology combined with digital twins can unlock incredible innovation. 
So a digital twin, it takes a real life object and it creates an exact copy of that object in the digital space. And this digital twin can represent a system to generate data and help determine decisions or make predictions about that system. And that's used to optimize operations, validate design ideas, or even provide predictive feedback into real-time processes. Now, modeling and simulation aren't new, but what differentiates this digital twin is that that digitally recreated object is fed real-time data from the real-life object in order to accurately and precisely imitate its actions and responses. And this allows companies to strategically make products the right way the first time and avoid costly mistakes. Digital twins are helping manufacturers provide clarity by creating a digital feedback loop that fosters exponential learning and adaptability. And this is extremely important today when the only constant is change. Demand uncertainty and supply chain disruptions are pushing our existing planning systems to the brink of failure. So let's go one step further, the cutting edge, the metaverse. The metaverse can be thought of as a collective virtual space that's created by the convergence of the virtually enhanced physical world and the physically persistent, or always on, virtual world which means it's thought of as the sum of your virtual reality, your augmented reality, and the internet. In fact, early versions of the metaverse can just be thought of as the anticipated future iteration of the internet that's often hailed as Web 3.0. But if the idea of creating avatars is what you think of, you're missing the bigger picture and how it should be applied in the industrial settings, especially in the near term. So here's how I want you to think about it. I want you to think about the metaverse as a digital twin on steroids that combines the interaction with employees and the outside world, like customers, to create a fully integrated, fully immersive, 3D engaging experience. So although the metaverse is a newer term to many and a buzzword to a lot of people, we're already starting to realize it. We're already starting to experience it. You may not know it or think about it that way. So this is where having the right vision of where you want to go based off what's possible will change what you work on today. That's part of my goal is to paint the vision for you of what the future looks like based off what's happening. AB InBev is a great example of this. As experts in process manufacturing, they're able to leverage this technology in their early versions of the metaverse to completely change the way that they operate the way that they innovate, the way that they manage, the way that they collaborate, and even the way that they engage. Let's take a peek. With more than 200 breweries and 160,000 employees across the globe, Anheuser-Busch InBev is the largest brewer in the world with an unparalleled portfolio of brands and a global presence with operations in 50 markets. AB InBev is an expert in their field and their forward-leaning and innovative spirit is leading to new breakthroughs in brewing. Through their digital factory and supply chain of the future initiatives, in collaboration with Microsoft, AB InBev is focused on transforming both breweries and their global operations by empowering their frontline colleagues with digital solutions that enable world-class manufacturing, mobility, data automation, and business insights. It begins with the brewery coming to life with AI, Azure Digital Twins, and the Microsoft Cloud. The brewmaster is responsible for making the best quality beer. She has unprecedented visibility into the brewing process so she can predict and monitor the complex chemical and biological fermentation parameters required to produce the highest quality product. Frontline operations can remotely monitor critical quality and traceability data from the manufacturing execution systems using the mobile brewery technology built using Azure. With built-in energy and utility management solutions, the digital brewery supports AB InBev's industry-leading sustainable development goals. 
After the perfect batch is ready to be bottled and shipped, AB InBev extends their digital twin solution to support the packaging line operations to ensure it's done right. These CAN plans are adopting Azure AI and Microsoft Project Bonsai's deep reinforcement learning to deliver line balancing optimization that detects and automatically compensates for bottlenecks in the complex CAN manufacturing operations. At AB InBev, their 100% uptime mindset is enabled through predictive maintenance and global support. A frontline operator can efficiently address problems through remote collaboration with a maintenance technician, ensuring no unplanned downtime of packaging equipment. The perfect beer is packaged and ready. The digital technologies of the AB InBev supply chain of the future minimizes carbon footprint while making sure the right beer gets to the right customer at the right time. This beer's journey is complete and AB InBev and Microsoft are taking bold steps into the future. Pretty impressive, isn't it? And they're not the only ones doing this. They just happen to have the coolest video, and I'm a big fan of their beer. So let's dive deeper into unlocking innovation. And in doing so, I want to talk about two topics, digital engineering and connected products. So we're going to start with digital engineering. So in theory, digital engineering can be applied anywhere that product engineers want to improve the product development process to make it more agile and responsive to market demands. It can be thought of as the art of creating, capturing, and integrating data with new digital skills and digital tools. This digital engineering ends up building up the data that forms and informs the digital twins that we just talked about. And digital engineering is a core fundamental principle of digital transformation. It doesn't even really matter what industry you're in and arguably what role you have. You need to start thinking like a digital engineer. You need to start embracing concepts like DevOps, Agile, continuous testing, iterations, and even experimentation with new and untested elements. This transformation is not just limited to product design and definition, but completely changes the way that products are manufactured, assembled, delivered, maintained, consumed, and even sold. Products are being not only designed differently, but being designed with intelligence built in and the customer experience as part of the sale. <clears throat> The delivery cycle used to end at the point of sale, but now manufacturers, especially OEMs, are making products relevant for years through small, continual releases that more align with customer behavior and expectations. And this is changing the way that manufacturers think about sunsetting products and capitalization by extending the life of the products. Over-the-air updates are becoming a normal occurrence, whether it's airplanes, cars, cell phones, laptops, and yes, even industrial automation components and machines. Even the way value and profit is captured is changing. The sale of hardware and products used to be the dominant form of this, but now companies are able to generate a lot of additional revenue streams through software, digital services, and data insights that are bringing customers closer to the manufacturer. <clears throat> Most manufacturers are, able act, are actually able to generate additional revenue streams just by looking at the data insights from the operation and use and maintenance of how their stuff is used by their customers. Doesn't matter if it's B2C or B2B. The question is, are you collecting and using that data? And lastly, engineering is no longer just integrating with the supply chain, but the entire value chain. Supply chain can be thought of as the production and distribution of goods. The value chain is much bigger. It involves innovation, testing, and marketing to add value to a product at every stage in the process, from planning to design, development, and delivery. So earlier I talked about the digital thread as the common denominator across those five main areas of focus for manufacturers. But the digital thread is what brings them to life. It's what connects the physical and virtual worlds together. 
It powers how we model and understand our systems, our products, our assets, our production, our facilities, our suppliers, and even our customers. Now, one thing to realize with a digital thread is that it's not just about connecting your data silos together. You also need to intelligently connect your data to your product and service life cycles. That's part of digital engineering. And when you do this, you need to be able to see your product definition and your product configuration. It's as designed state, it's as manufactured state, and it's as maintained state in the field. And this creates incredible visibility and collaboration, not just with your production teams, but with your suppliers and even directly with your customers. Now, we capture all this data and history already. It's what drives the effectiveness of our digital twins. But being able to look into an individual serialized asset or product at any point in time and then perform a rewind and replay function to see how it performed or how it would have performed in different scenarios, that's game changing. And then apply AI and deep reinforcement learning on top of that to do analysis and predict future outcomes and explore new opportunities and research inefficiencies. That's cool. There are many different systems out there involved in the manufacturing landscape that leverage the flow of data. And they all come from different software packages, whether it's CAD, PLM, MES, ERP, QMS, or CRM, to name a few examples. You didn't think I'd be able to successfully pull off six acronyms in one sentence and have it make sense, did you? Unfortunately, not many companies have built this digital thread or democratized their data. In fact, according to a recent PTC study, an estimated only 34% of companies said that the data generated in their department is widely accessible on enterprise systems. And sadly, that's the best stat. It's going to get much, much worse from there. 16% of company data in other departments, 9% of data from products in the field or customers, and 8% from suppliers. That's not good. We got to do a lot better than that. Imagine if that were 100%. So I want to talk about an example. Rolls-Royce has evolved from just manufacturing and selling aerospace engines to extending comprehensive maintenance through connecting with their engines. And that connectivity and data allows them to create their total care service offering, or what's also known in the industry as power by the hour, to better service their companies or their customers and improve their maintenance operations. They use IoT to collect the data, ran it through machine learning, and produced some incredible insights that end up changing their business model and resulted in improving their customers' operations and even optimize their flight schedules and maintenance plans. On top of that, in October of 2021, the US Air Force awarded Rolls-Royce the contract to the next B-52 airplane engines. And that is estimated to be $2.6 billion. And this was the first government E-Series bid where everything had to be digitally submitted, including design, digital verification, design, and validation. Now, digital verification and validation are top priorities for engineers within manufacturers because customers are demanding to have their products digitally verified from multiple dimensions. In the case of aircraft engines, that could be structural integrity, fuel flow modeling, airflow modeling, heat transfer modeling, power generation, just to name a few. And prototyping is just costly and time consuming and still doesn't get you as much. In fact, when you do digital verification, you not only shorten the development time, but you allow companies to switch away from designing and then simulating to designing and simulating. Not only did Rolls-Royce meet all the requirements of their bid, but they were able to show how they reduced the maintenance and sustainment burdens while simultaneously increasing fuel efficiency. And they did that all virtually. In fact, their digital and virtual processes have been so effective 
that they're going to continue leasing only 40% of their office space in their Indianapolis facility. Their lease was up, the pandemic happened, and they were able to demonstrate doing most of this working at home. So a lot of innovation with one company. So the other part of unlocking innovation I want to talk about is connected products. And I broke this down into three areas for you. The first is just basic connectivity, connecting to your product. And that allows you to do remote monitoring, health checks, that over-the-air updates I talked about, and even geofencing and security as examples. But if you're connected to these products, you can gather data, and when you can gather data, you can generate insights and usage reports to help determine how to make the next generation of products or new features. Plus, you can also learn better how and when to maintain your products in the field or how much life is left in them. This can then lead to new business models. You can take those insights and turn them into digital services, proactively offering them to your customers for a premium, maybe even a subscription model, or if you go one step further, product as a service. Whether it be packaging as a service, printing as a service, power tool as a service, and yes, all those exist, Michelin is offering tire as a service. ThyssenKrupp Aerospace is offering material as a service. Lots of companies are already starting to offer this. But the shift to product as a service can be challenging for some manufacturers. I mean, the traditional business model offered upfront cash, but with little to no commitment from the customer's use of the asset, which unfortunately doesn't allow you to stay connected with them in their evolving, changing, business needs. But manufacturers today are starting to realize it's pretty valuable to stay connected with your customers after the sale of the product all the way through to the disposal of the product. So there are three major steps to get to product as a service. First is digital services. Manufacturers are finding that adding these digital services on top of their existing install base is just the least risky option. You connect your equipment, you collect the data, you turn to insights, you charge a premium, all while keeping the existing upfront sales model. But if large upfront expenditures can be challenged for your customers, you can reshape the way you engage with them and charge by offering a subscription model, which changes CapEx to OpEx. And it also changes accountability from one time to continual. And then if you go one step further, outcome-based contracts. This allows manufacturers the ability to demonstrate their commitment to their customers by charging for the outcome delivered instead of the asset. And when you charge for the outcome delivered, you are way more connected to the business needs of your customer. Plus, it holds you accountable to make sure that that asset works, which means you stay connected to it. You monitor it, and you proactively service that asset. So let's talk about one other example, Chelly Group. So Chelly Group is a global company that's based in Italy that manufactures and services dispensing equipment for soft drinks, water, and beer. They have about 400 employees or so in six different factories. They've implemented an IoT strategy that allows them to directly connect to their customer and even change their business model. They implemented a model-based PLM and IoT strategy as the foundation of their digital transformation, which resulted in this novel smart warranty that's unique in their industry. Their warranty coverage is actually based off of how hard and how often you use their equipment. And are you using it within specifications or not? So your warranty can shorten or get longer based off those answers. That's innovative. Then, because they were capturing all this data, they were able to capture that data and turn it into insights that led to increases in profitability and differentiation in their tap and brewing offering. And that led to a 14% greater sell-through uh, rate via sales and inventory channels. 
a reduction in operation failures, equipment failures, by 13 percent, an increase in product quality by 27 percent by monitoring sanitation si uh, cycles, temperature, and even shelf life, and it reduced service costs by 10 percent just through predictive maintenance. The key for them was having PLM and IoT together as part of their digital thread, which in their case extended all the way to their customer. There is so much opportunity out there. And in the age of digital transformation in Industry 4.0, there is no time to waste. If your companies did even half the stuff I talked about today, how much would that revolutionize your company? Or what if I asked it a different way? If your competitors did half the stuff I talked about up there, how difficult of a situation would you be in? <clears throat> Remember, the technology is there and it works. The question is, are you using it to unlock innovation? I'm gonna end with this quote from Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. Our industry does not respect tradition. It only respects innovation. Thank you.